Friends, you may not know it, but you have probably touched and been in touch with darkness in your life. Yes, the occult, or a word that means hidden, is all around us, especially in our country today, and we face it in many different ways, and some of you have knowingly been in touch with it, and others just by accident. We see it in TV, we see it in the things we read, in the movies that are around us, and even in our government. And in today's video from Get Us Out of Here with Maria Sema, we're gonna go through it deeply to talk about this topic of the occult. Join me in today's video. Pray with me. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the channel Uniquely Mary, where we go to Jesus uniquely through Mary with her intercession, with her motherly care, and her protection. And I entrust this whole channel and each and every video, and all the viewers to the Blessed Mother. And I pray for all of you. What other YouTube channel says that they pray for you? I don't think I've really seen that, but I pray for you. With every video I make, I am praying for you. And if you don't watch my videos, I don't pray for you. But everyone else, I do pray for you that God may bless you abundantly in everything that you do. If you'd like to support this channel, please hit the like button comment down below, and check out these links as different ways for you to support financially this channel. God willing, this one day becomes my full-time job. Right now I'm a therapist, and it's awesome, but I would love to do this instead. Whatever God wants. So my friends, let's go into this chapter and hit it because there's a lot of amazing things that we need to learn and read. So this is the first question that she was brought. She is asked, what can you tell me about the occult? The word occult means hidden, or in darkness, and is given to all practices that recognized as such or not are in communion with Satan. Today there are far too many for any one person to list thoroughly, and every part of the world has different practices that of course have entirely different names. Satan is the expert disguise artist, but what is most powerful and destructive today is the pure and simple evil within the huge number of people who curse others, send spells and enchantments upon others, Black magic in all its forms is rampant today like never, never before. Now, first of all, some of you may say, oh, okay, magic and spells, and that's all fake. Um, it's not. It's not. And one of the things that Satan has done, like in, in the church, he wants us to think that it's all a joke, that it's just make-believe, it's just in movies, but it's not real because that's one of the ways that he hides. He has us not take him seriously and not take evil seriously so that it can kind of weave its way into our lives. Let's keep listening. What is the effect upon people who are the targets of such spiritual attacks? Every such assault can at least cause confusion and fear and just as often lead people into depression, oppression, agony, confusion, divorce, hate, demonic possession, and finally an agonizing death if they are not very well protected by a good life and by the protection of the angels as well as the poor souls. So there you see that having a devotion to the poor souls, praying for them, asking for their prayers can be a huge source of protection from this type of, type of evil. Another thing that you can see, and I think that's really an important thing for us to grasp is that, and this might be the case for maybe 99% of the things out there, but I would say that huge amounts of the evil that is out there and the suffering, the unnecessary suffering that we carry comes from evil such as the occult. It is not God's will. It comes from intentional evil, not just kind of accidental, but people who are intentionally trying to send this evil onto you and I and to our family members. 
Next question. And for the people who practice in the occult, what will be the effect on them if they do not cease immediately? She says, the effects of these contacts, whether conscious, ignorant, active, or passive, with any of these will be the same on them and will also run down upon the following generations. Did you hear that? So if you had descendants that did the occult, you might be suffering from what they did. Think about that. The effects of these sins will always run their course unless the people involved actively and persistently call upon Jesus, Mary, and St. Michael the Archangel to intercede and block the attacks from continuing. Next question, because this is a lot to think about. Every time I read this, I'm thinking, okay, things I need to kind of chew on. What ought people do if they have been active in any of these practices and wish to stop now that you have said this? Her response is, first, stop it immediately and stop seeing anybody you got to know through these practices and do this without announcing it to anybody. Burn to ashes all materials that you have collected while participating in these practices. Just leave silently and then find safety among Christians. Once there, find a good and experienced priest or layman who has experience in these matters. Leaving silently is very important because if you announce it to anyone, the news of your potential conversion might very easily travel up the hierarchy in whatever system you've been, and if it arrives up there, they can and will attack you. In all these arrangements, there are witches or wizards who can and will attack you with the demons under their control. Maria, this sounds extreme, she says. And then she responds, Satan is extreme and will stop at nothing to hurt and discredit those who leave his clutches. Leave silently. Did you hear that? Maybe some of you are thinking, this can't be real. Well, think about this. Uh, haven't you ever heard something of an expression where... You know, if you get involved with the, with the mafia or with a gang, you just better get the heck out of there and not tell anyone. Imagine if you were in collaboration with a gang, like I'm from Central America, a gang from Mexico, a drug cartel. Would you tell the top drug cartel person, hey, I'm getting out of here. I found Jesus, have a nice day. They would say, yeah, let me shoot you. Bang, you're dead. Because they don't want the information getting out that it's all really evil. Well, in an even more intense way, she is kind of try, trying to drive this point that if you have been involved in the occult, especially in practicing it, to leave silently because you do not want any uh, kind of counterattacks or attacks to be on you or your family members. So again, remember she said, leave silently and find refuge among Christians. This shows us just how evil evil is. And that's what I want you to think about. Evil is not nice. We cannot judge evil to be like us. Evil is, as its name implies, really wicked and cruel. The next question, do you know of cases where people trying to leave evil practices were harmed because they did not stay silent as you advise? Yes, I do, she says. A name was brought to me once to find out whether this person was alive and then whether or not he had been murdered. The answers I received from the souls in purgatory confirmed that he had been murdered because of his conversion. Unfortunately, he had not listened to advice that Christians around him had given him not to return to his former surroundings. They somehow sensed that his earlier acquaintances had plenty to hide and would not be happy with his sudden and deep conversion. His negle neglecting this sound advice then did cost him his life, but then again, we were able to have him delivered very quickly, and he is now in heaven with Jesus. That's crazy, but... It's true. That's something that we need to listen to the words of Jesus. What does Jesus say about things like this? He says we must be innocent as doves and wise as serpents. So she's talking about that wisdom, not being stupid. It is not Christian to be dumb. We must be wise. We must ask Jesus to enlighten our minds so that we not be dumb. It's not okay to be ignorant, naive, or dumb in the decisions that we make, especially in regards to evil. We want to be smart about how we protect ourselves. Then the next question, it gets better, doesn't it? I'm going to try to keep this at 12 minutes, but if you want more, let me know because I have a surprise coming at the end. How can witches and wizards hurt us is the question. She responds, oh, in endless ways. They can cause divorces, 
Have you ever been divorced? Have you ever considered that maybe your divorce is the cause of the occult? Is a cause, it was caused by the occult or by some sort of evil or spell or something like that. Satan was involved in it in some ways. Think about that. Maybe ask the Holy Spirit to enlighten you. They can send illnesses upon people or burn houses down, leaving no slight traces of the source. They can terrorize people at night. If there is enough power, for instance, a group of covens can easily murder without ever leaving their houses. Had you ever heard that? Because I never had until I read this book. A priest was murdered by them a while ago. And on top of it all, they were perverse enough to do it on Christmas Eve. So even those that are holy and in service of God are not always protected. They can listen in on conversations at great distances without any mechanical means and then later slander those listen in upon. They can cause car accidents and such, and they can do all this at any distance. Yes, all they need is a name and address, a photograph, or something like clothing from the person to proceed with their evil. Yet any negative results from black magic always have to be permitted by God. Good Christians have nothing to worry about, for if they stay humble, in a state of grace, and in prayer, then this protection is far stronger than anything that the demons can do. Now, after reading a lot of those things, some of you are like, oh my gosh, like, get me some bulletproof spiritual armor or something. And by the way, I would say it's, uh, yeah, this is my bulletproof armor, by the way, if you want to message me about you and I'll, and I'll send you where you can get a really good miraculous medal. But yeah, in reading all those things, it makes you wonder what the heck are we going to do? They sound really powerful. And she gives the advice of living what should be the normal Christian life, a life of prayer, a life of being in the state of grace, being close to Jesus and Mary and everything that a Christian is called to do, being humble, calling upon the protection of the souls in purgatory. So if you didn't listen to me before about asking for their prayers, hopefully now you will. And then one more question, because I want to keep this short and there's still several pages. Let me know if you want a part two, and then we'll continue with this next and last question for today's video. Do black masses exist? And she responds, yes, and more today than ever before in history. It is at these that they torture Jesus by doing horrendous things to consecrated hosts, innocent babies and children. Babies are conceived and then born without birth certificates so that they can do this to them. They also sacrifice virgins, have orgies, drink blood, and eat body parts to gain the power that is promised to them if they do. Satan stops at nothing. Many of these organizations will, after people have achieved a particular level, tell them they can never leave. This of course is a lie. One can always leave. Jesus for, even forgives people who have led black masses. So we end on that note of hope. Even if you have been involved in the occult, Jesus forgives you. Even if you have led it or been on the other side, Jesus forgives you and Jesus has more power. But we need to be aware of what we are being protected from and to ask for that specific protection. So here's my surprise. My friends, if you like this video, guess what? Uh, I had a viewer who reached out to me and she had been involved in the occult for 20 years and has had lots of experience. So I asked her, would you be willing to do a live interview on the YouTube channel to just share your experience? And she said, yes. So right now we're kind of in the stages of planning it. Please pray for this whole situation. I'm sure the devil doesn't want it, but I don't care because we are here to get revenge on him, to do good for Jesus and to bring down the kingdom of Satan, one YouTube channel at a time and one video at a time. So friends, this would be amazing because we would get to hear her journey, how she left, what it was like, and then what can we learn so that we can avoid these things. Please continue praying for this and all other Catholic and Christian YouTube channels. Support it, hit a like, and I'll see you in the next video.